Well, good morning, Samson, and uh, good morning to your, uh, uh, your other panelists. So I, I, I partly agree with the OSB, but I also partly disagree uh, in some other areas. If you think about the issue of corruption um, and the fact that I think that there are times where you need to court um, public support in your fight for corrupt, in your fight against corruption, then I can see the virtue of his regular update um, as you know as um, required by the law. But also I can see the virtue of expressing frustration that he may feel um, on the job, right? Because I think that sometimes we tend to treat corruption as a purely um, legal fight, right? We subject it all the time to a legal test. And not that I have a problem going, with, going to the courts or dealing with the law, no. But I think the nature of corruption is such that you also sometimes need to use political tools. To, to, to fight it. And some of those political tools involve courting public support, expressing your frustration to the public, so that the public may then find ways to put pressure or at least to draw the attention of some of these um, key political actors to, let's say, you know, take the fight against corruption more seriously than perhaps they would um, ordinarily do. So in using some of those strategies, as a public administrator, he's doing the art part of it. It can't always be the science of public administration. So on that, on that note, um, I agree with him using some of, some of those, those tactics, right? It, you know, if you look at the reaction that he's getting, you can see that the public's reaction is one of this fight against corruption is much tougher than anyone can imagine. Um, that is going to take a long time, et cetera, et cetera. So you sensitize the public to how difficult this, this fight against corruption is. The, the part where I disagree with the, with the special prosecutor is um, you know, going into the specifics of you know, particular rulings and his disagreements with that, but also couching in a language that seems to suggest that um, there is some sort of concerted effort on the part of the judiciary to make his work difficult. That I, uh, that I think is, is, is very worrying. And it's also very worrying because the judiciary is not enjoying the best of public perception um, at this moment. Uh, you mentioned Afrobarometer, so I have to throw in Afrobarometer once again. But if you look at the question of trust, uh, in our courts of law, and the perception in our, in our, you know, in our, in our, in our courts of law based on, you know, um, the Afrobarometer data. The courts are not enjoying the best of public perceptions. And you need, and, and again, the level of trust is also at an all-time low. So when you combine all of these things, where you need to get citizens to find ways to repose or regain their confidence and trust in, the, in, the, in, in this very important institution, then it becomes even more worrying when the, when the special prosecutor comes out and gives this press conference and say the kinds of things that may reinforce some of the, uh, the suspicions or the mistrust that citizens are already having you know, um, you know, in the court. And it is not every time that you would expect to quote unquote win a case in a court of law. For me, win or lose, so long as the institution followed all the right, you know, procedures and dealt with the case in a fair and impartial manner, then we must respect the outcome. Because that is the only way I believe you can strengthen trust and faith in institutions, right? The real test of how much I trust an institution is not when things go my way. It is when things don't go my way and I'm able to still embrace the decision of that institution is what or is how you, 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 you build confidence um, and trust. And for me, that is the, the worrying part for me, you know, with
with regard your, your to friends that. your friends in the studio are lawyers and lawyers of such standing yes that you know they disagree with what you are saying because they say the special prosecutor is special it's not just a mere prosecutor in fact the special prosecutor is not just a prosecutor. The things the special prosecutor does, your other prosecutors don't do. The attorney general does not do the things the special prosecutor will do. The special prosecutor can, on its own, scan around the country and say, look, something is not fit to, be, to hold a public office. It should not be appointed if it is contemplated. Attorney General doesn't have that function. The Attorney General, again, the argument is, may not or should not be here to criticize the court because the Attorney General sits in the Judicial Council somewhat as part of the government. Again, the Attorney General is, quote, the unofficial leader of the bar. So, he cannot do certain things. The attorney general that we know, attorney, attorneys general that we have known, hardly prosecute their own, as in members of the government. Special prosecutor was set up to do exactly that because they cannot do it. The attorney general, attorneys general cannot do that. So there's a so, difference. Yes, so Samson, I, I agree that uh, there are key differences between the, uh, the, the attorney general and the special prosecutor. And there's something by design and the law that makes him, quote unquote, more special than an ordinary prosecutor or even uh, the, the attorney general. So I, I don't have qualms with that. But for me, I worry about the, you know, the, the kinds of public conduct, right, whether it's, you know, um, words, uh, attitudes, that may undermine the institutions that underpin our democracy. That is my worry, right, which is why I don't have a, pro you know, there's, there, I, I, there's a way of expressing one's frustration with an institution without creating dissatisfaction or seeming to impugn on the character and integrity of the institution. And particularly because we are also at a time where, and it's not just the court of law, we are also at a time where our institutions are enjoying the low levels of trust and high perceptions of corruption that we, you know, we have seen so far in the conduct of the Afrobarometer. And yes, I'm not saying that the these institutions are, are blameless. You know, I'm sure that sometimes some of their own actions or inactions is what feeds the sentiment that citizens, you know, express about them. So okay. I, I, I don't absolve them of any um, sort of, I, I, I don't give them a clean pass. Mm. But I'm also saying that I worry that uh, the, the office of the special prosecutor would be part of this growing chorus that um, you know, further reinforces this fight that I'm trying to, you know... If the, special prosecutor, if the special prosecutor has evidence to suspect so, should, should it not be the one to lead that chorus? Fair enough. If he, if, if he really has evidence that some way, somehow, the courts or particular courts or particular judges are ganged up against him and making his work very difficult. That, that is fine. But again, Samson, I just feel or I just worry that, you know, uh, in that role, that I, I, I just disagree that he should be making the kinds of, you know, comments publicly that undermines, you know, an institution that is already you know, battling public perception and trying to regain, you know, the, the, the lost trust and increasing perception. So to be, to be specific, precise, the special prosecutor said many 
lawyers, senior lawyers, have inundated him with calls. And they say that if he continue to issue those statements after rulings, the judges will gang up against him. I'll read that portion. I'll look for it and read it. Either he said that they told him that they will or they may gang up against him. But he gives you the four examples. So we can now move into, the, into that area. From where you sit, you may start the analysis before we get to the lawyers in the studio. Sure. From what he, he finds... From the first, dealing with Sir John's will, mm -hmm. which disclosed that he had willed property that belongs to the state to his family, which we will not have discovered perhaps until and unless he had passed. Mm -hmm. And the will became a, a, a matter for probating, what we call probate. The, the will has to be taken to court, for a court to give power for the will, uh, the things in the will to be distributed among those who have been named. And then the discovery comes out. He says, the court says, you came to court too late. Since the man is dead, the doors are shut. The, the, the special prosecutor says, I take strong exception to this one, and I think the public must know that this does not bode well for the prevention of corruption, and it doesn't help his work. He says, are you saying, and he uses that example, that the, bank, the governor of the central bank uses money in the consolidated fund to do certain things. Because he's dead, we cannot take that money back. Is that what the court is saying? He disagrees with that. He shouldn't be saying that publicly. So, but, but Samson, if, what does the law say? And I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, a, I'm not a lawyer, but what does the law say, uh, you know, uh, from the example that you're giving, if that is the law and the interpretation that the, a giving judge is giving to that case and saying, well, he's dead and therefore in my understanding and interpretation of the law, there isn't anything that can be done. If you disagree with the judge on that, at that level, I'm sure uh, our, our court system you know, allows for you to appeal to you know, another level in the, you know, in the judiciary setup. In fact, the in fact, he has but appealed, so they have appealed that, to the court of appeal. Okay, so something, is he saying that he... It's his expectation that every case he takes to the court that he is going to win or that his interpretation of the law should be what carries the, uh, it should, it should, you know, his interpretation of the law should win every time. I, mean, I don't think that is a realistic expectation. I mean, uh, like I said, I'm not a lawyer, mm. but I've, you know, I've followed judicial proceedings enough to know that you know, even sometimes lawyers themselves and judges themselves do not even agree on the interpretation of tell the me, law. Tell me what you feel about that one. That should it be the law that you steal public assets or funds. Because you are dead, we shouldn't take it back. No, that shouldn't be the law. But Samson, if that is the law that is currently on the books and we find it problematic, which I do, right? Because if I, if I steal public funds and I die, I can bequeath it to my family, to my children, you know, things like that. So then you don't want my family to become beneficiaries of, um, of, of, of my stealing of public funds. But what does the law currently say? And if the law is what is getting in the way of preventing, you know, this stealing to be bequeathed to someone's, um, you know, offspring, children, family, then there's, we have to do something about the law. Okay. Or if there is room to give the, the law a different interpretation, then that is what has to be done. But I don't think it's a realistic ex expectation that you would win every single case you take to the court. Okay, so and the next, the next other case we can use, some way, some the next other case he speaks about, he says he's very worried. 
that he's investigating Charles Bisu. Yeah. Someone who has had difficulties in government and actually has been let go. And in the invest during the, the investigation, the man says, look, I don't want to be investigated because I have reasons why you should investigate me and you should not be prosecuting me. That is if you are done with the investigation. Mm -hmm. So he goes to the court mm -hmm. on the blind side of the special prosecutor. He goes alone, which is allowed by law, ex parte application, and tells the human rights court that issue an injunction against the investigator, not to investigate me, not to arrest me, not to touch me, for 10 days. And the court issues that. He says, that clearly doesn't help the fight against corruption. The next time you are going to have a terrorist, suspected terrorist, a murderer, all sorts of people seek refuge in the courts, and we are all doomed. What do you say? But you see something, this is where I go back to something that the president once said, which in principle I agree with him. He says, not until you find yourself on the wrong side of the law, you would not have full appreciation for due process. These are things that we have worked into the system as part of due process. Yes, are there times where people may abuse that due process? Sure. But, you know, the law doesn't stop one from going to the court to seek certain, you know, certain refuge, right? It doesn't necessarily make it right, but the law permits it. The process allows it. It can be frustrating. Um, you know, uh, you know my, my mom was once in, involved in a land litigation that lasted 19 years, <laughs> right? You know, eventually she emerged victorious. But can you imagine going through that for 19 years? But again, you know, it, it was the use of all of the, you know, the people she was fighting or who were fighting back would we'll turn to the judiciary um, and use all of these rules, processes in place that allows for those things. In, in, so, in, yes, that, in that particular to... process, I can share an opinion with you. Sure. In that particular process, before, before now, it's all been devil's advocacy I'm playing. Now, okay. in that particular process, from what I have known the process to be, it is a clear abuse of the process that leads right. to a one land matter stretching 19 years if it is sitting in one court. Right. In this same court, I have done a land matter in less than one year. So the question is, who do you blame? Right. Do you blame the system? Now, so now, now, today, the today, the today, right. today, uh, no, today yes. the Chief Justice has started a process. If you have a case, for example, that is sitting there and you are not attending to it and it's idle, the next time you show up in court, the court by itself has struck out that case because you are not serious. And yes, and all of those things, if we want to improve the efficiency in the administration of justice, should be done. But when you say that, you know, a day would come when, you know, a murderer or a terrorist may walk into the court to seek refuge. Well, in as bad as it may look like someone who has committed a terrorist act will still go to the court and demand certain things. We still give people who are accused of various crimes, even murder, certain rights. And that's why I said when the president says, not until you're in trouble, you don't tend to sort of fully appreciate the difficulty. The, 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 the OSP says, the OSP says, yes. you and I, when we are arrested, restricted, or detained on suspicion of one crime or the other. The Constitution trumps. The Constitution in Article 14 gives us the right mm -hmm. to be liable to bail within 48 hours from the law enforcement uh, body. If they don't grant us bail, then they will take us to court within 48 hours, within which we'll be giving bail. So it doesn't make sense, and it smacks of something very retrogressive in a corruption matter to say, don't touch the person, don't arrest him. When, in fact, if the OSP arrested him, 
he will be entitled to bail within 48 hours anyway. Right. I mean, something. And you see, this is, um, you know, this is the, 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 the complexity of any governance system, right? Okay. Where you have different parts of the governance system that some way, somehow, ultimately, you have to reconcile to be able to take a particular course of action, which is, for example, fighting corruption. But my point, my point is that in, you know, in as much as I believe in the fight against corruption, the persons that you accuse or suspect of these things also do have you know, certain rights. And so you can't just say that because I am charged with fighting corruption and therefore it should deny the other person whatever rights that they are also guaranteed under due process. Right? You have to find a way of reconciling. Yeah, so, so the question of the OSP is, what is the other rights of the other person that's been denied in these cases? The last example that you may uh, share your view on mm -hmm. what you think the OSP is saying is this one. He says, by the law, once I have a reasonable suspicion that you, have, you are committed or you are doing something which has to do with corruption, I should be able to come to the court and ask the court to freeze your accounts. Sure. And I should be able to seize your money. Now, he says, a judge says, no, in this matter, in the Cecilia Dapa case, you, you came late in respect of the seizure, the time that you must come for the seizure. He disagrees anyway, but... He says the judge says you have not done investigations so you must have done investigations before you come and ask me to uh, grant you the seizure or confirm the seizure for you the special prosecutor says he wants all of us to know that this is wrong and this will not help because he is investigating that is when he must seize or he must uh, freeze your accounts and the court must help it to hold the accounts until the period that the court says if he doesn't bring you uh, before the court to be charged then he must release everything to you so to expect that I should have done investigations before I issue a freezing order and come to you to uh, confirm the freezing is retrogressive it doesn't progress the fight against corruption what do you say once again, he shouldn't be speaking about that. Oh no! I mean, again, something he, he he can speak about. He can speak about that, but he's having a different interpretation, or he's having a disagreement with how a judge is also interpreting the rules of that particular that particular process. Do you see what I'm saying? Again, something for me, my worry is yes, he's the special prosecutor when he he suspects these things. Um, depending on what the law grants or does not grant him, he can proceed. But we cannot also overlook, you know, the you know the fact the fact that at the same time you don't also want to give him him or her whoever is special prosecutor a totally free hand, right? You do want a few checks in the you know in, you know as part of the process. So again, for me, fine if he wants to come out publicly and say that. Sure, he believes that he should. As I, I'm, as I am saying, the fact that you are having a disagreement or a fundamental difference in an interpretation of how the rules should work or the process should work may not necessarily mean that someone or some person or some institution is ganged up against you. And I think that's where I part company with the, uh, you know, with a special process. Because it, 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 it seems like the judiciary is intentionally undermining, you know, uh, his, his his work. And that, yeah. again, maybe he may know something that I don't, and I would concede that. But I just worry that this impression is being created. All right. You know, is he, is he justified, is, is he justified in that suspicion when the judge who makes these adverse comments about his work and his competence and dismisses his application and there's a subsequent application and he's going before the same judge and he goes to the CJ and says 
give me a new judge, don't give me the same judge. Is it justified in that suspicion that it appears I'm being sent to the slaughter? Uh, the same, I mean, the allowed, same henchman, so to speak. To have, he's allowed to have those suspicions. I won't take that away from me. I mean, he's the one who is sitting in the hot seat of special prosecutor and mm. knows exactly. My, my question to you, my question to you is that are these suspicions reasonable from the from the circumstances? From the circumstances, yes, but. Let me add a but, though. But it doesn't mean that because the outcome didn't go your way, that those reasonable suspicions is what it is. That, that, for me, that's my only caution. Okay. Right. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. My and pleasure. that is Professor um, Osai Kwapong. Uh, he is with the CDD. He's a democracy uh, fellow with the CDD. Is a political scientist and democracy and development fellow with the CDD. Uh, he takes leave of us at this point, Dr. John Osai Kwapong.